Hi, my name is Alex with Ape Tech Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to show you how to export and import a Confluence space. This is a useful thing to know in case you ever need to go from one instance of Confluence to another. Maybe your company is merged, maybe you're merging with another team, or if you ever just want to have a backup of your stuff, or if you're ever just for whatever reason somebody wants your space in its entirety, then you can give it to another person or to another instance and they can import it over there. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe, drop a like if you get value on this video, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Let's jump into Confluence. All right, so this is gonna work for pretty much any space. You do need to be an administrator for Confluence, and so all you need to do is basically find the space that you want. Keep in mind that there's two different types of spaces. There's communal, which are like team spaces, and there's personal, which are basically just individuals. If you are a site administrator and you're in charge of migrating the spaces, the team ones or the communal ones, those are going to be very easy to do because you're going to be able to see them. The personal ones, not so much. If somebody has added restrictions to their personal space, you're not going to be able to see it unless you're on the Confluence premium version in which case you're gonna be able to basically have the master key to every single space. But if you're on standard or free like I am, this is primarily gonna work for whatever spaces are exposed to you. And so you wanna make sure that before you embark on this journey, especially if you have to move the whole thing over, you wanna make sure that every space has basically granted you access to it Otherwise, it's going to be a little bit tricky to do because you won't know the spaces that you can't see. So anyways, assuming that you can see the space that you're going to export, all you got to do is go into your space. So I'm just going to click on this one here. And then you're going to go to space settings. From space settings, you can get to this in two different ways. You can basically come to manage space. Or if you go back to where we were under space settings in general, there's a manage space section here, and we're gonna go to export space. So go ahead and click on that, and then you're gonna basically be asked the type of format. You wanna make sure that for this particular thing, since we're going to export and re-import, we wanna do the XML. If you just wanna have like a backup, you can have the HTML, but the XML is gonna be the one you want Specifically, if you're going to do the re-import. This is really, really key because if you pick any of the other two, it's not going to work. So make sure you select XML. Click Next. And then you're going to basically be prompted to select whether you want the full export, which includes every page and attachments and everything. Or if you just want a custom where you get to basically pick what does or doesn't come. In most scenarios, you probably just want a full export so it brings everything. And then that's basically all. Like that's pretty much all you got to configure here. So go ahead and click the export button. And then depending on the size, depending on how many attachments you have, depending on how many pages you have, just so many variables, right? If it's a really, really large space, sizing space is like three, five, six gigabytes big, it's going to take a while. So you might be watching some paint right here. But if it's a small one, you can see that it takes only a few seconds. Once this bar goes all the way across and you are 100% complete, all you got to do is download the export. And so you click on that download and it's going to download it here. Now, one thing to note is if you're on a Mac, Apple does something really, really weird. I'll call it wonky. Apple does something really, really wonky with respect to how the zip file that's being downloaded is managed. So you want to make sure that if you're on a Mac, like I am, you actually have to um, unextract the thing because it automatically extracts it for you. And that's not going to work. You want the actual zip file. Because if you don't have the actual zip file, when we go to the import, which is next, this is not going to work. Another thing for you to note that is very, very critical. When you export the space, you'll notice that every single space has a key. So if I just go to view all spaces, and I go to this Ape Tech Tech Tutorials, you'll notice that there's a key, ATT, up here. This is very, very important because when you do the export, it contains the metadata for that ATT space. If in your destination, 
the new confluence that you're trying to go to, if there already exists a space with ATT in it, it is not going to import correctly. It's going to kind of fake you out for a little bit. And then eventually it's going to error out and tell you, sorry, we couldn't import that space. So make sure that prior to doing the export, you do some recon. Find out if your destination has the same key, because if it does, you're going to be in trouble. So the mitigation for that is in the source. And this one that I have change the key to something else. That way, every page and everything else has that trickle down. They get updated correctly, and then you'll be able to import into the new area better. All right. So let me walk you through the steps on how to import. Assuming that you've crossed all your T's and dotted those I's, you got the zip file ready to go. All you got to do is go to the little gear. So you do need to be a site admin to do this. So we go to the little gear. And then on the left hand side, we're going to find a section here for import spaces. So click on that. And then in here, you're going to essentially select the file. So we're going to go and find that zip file again. Remember, make sure that it's a zip. It won't work if it's not the zip. It's going to upload it. Same thing as I described earlier, depending on the size of that zip, this may take anywhere from a minute to 20 minutes to like 30 minutes. I've seen sometimes. And then you got to click import. Once you click import, this is obviously not going to work for me because I already have the space imported. But once you have it in there, it's going to unzip it. It's going to do its thing. It's going to prepare it. And it's going to go through all the motions. It's going to be doing that check for that duplicate on the key, which in this case, it should error out. It shouldn't match that the key already exists and it should complain. But it'll do all of that. And again, this can take anywhere between 5 to 10, 15 minutes. So in general, a good, like the process usually takes about, my rule of thumb is 30 minutes for a small project and about an hour for like a larger project. So kind of manage your expectations with respect to how long this is going to take. And as you can see, I'm getting the error because the space already exists. But typically when it's a completely new space and it doesn't exist, all you're going to do is click next. It's going to ask if you want to fix your Jira macros. I always say no. And then once you do that, you're done. All you got to do now is go to your spaces and you'll notice that your space is in there with all the pages. Go in there, double check, make sure that all the attachments came through, make sure that everything looks good. And that's pretty much it. There's not much you have to do after that point. You may want to update the permissions though, because if you're going to a new destination, they may have a different set of rules. The groups that used to have access might not exist in that new space. The users that used to have access might not exist in the new space. Heck, you might need to add new users because maybe you merge with another company or something like that. So just double check all your permissions to make sure that they're up to par with what the expectation is, because otherwise it's going to bring in all the old values, which may or may not actually work in that new space. So that's pretty much it for this one. Hopefully that was beneficial. If you've got any value out of it, make sure you drop a thumbs up, hit that like button. Also, if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It really does help the channel out tremendously. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now.